Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high-quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Bella Salon and Day Spa, located at 41 West Main Street in Northeast Pennsylvania, proudly supports Chautauqua Sunrise and its volunteers. More information at bellasalonanddayspa.net. Funding is provided by a grant from New York State Senator Catherine M. Young, representing Western New York's 57th District with a local office in Olean. Chautauqua Sunrise is made possible by a grant from Fredonia Place, a continuing care retirement community providing dignity in a modern luxury environment. From the Access Channel 5 studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Channel 5. Continuing the traditions of Senior Report, we are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week, countywide, from 9 to 10 a.m. Join us by calling in live, emailing us, or checking out our social media. And now, from the Channel 5 Studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Chautauqua Sunrise. I'm Doc Hamels, and we are glad that you are uh, visiting with us today. So, sit back, relax, we've got a great show in store for you, as always. Um, boy, weather's been pretty nice, but I heard some good news, bad news today, okay? Here's the good news that the weather is nice, and it's kind of warm, and the lake is 46 degrees. The bad news is it's warm, and the lake is 46 <laughs> degrees. And, uh, and as, you, as we all know, that living around here, if the lake is warm, that's just a great big snow machine. And uh, as long as the, it stays nice and warm with the air, we're cool. But uh, uh, and if it does get cold, watch out. But anyways, Enjoy the great weather, and it's a great time to get the Christmas trees up and get the uh, Christmas lights out and decorations. Uh, I'm one of those guys who always waits till there's four feet of snow outside and it's freezing to put the lights out, so I finally got smart last year, and now I put them up when the weather's still pretty nice. So, you know, I, I just said Merry or Christmas a couple, three times. I've, been, I, I've had this question in my mind, okay? I, I, nobody's been able to quite answer this for me. If I say, hey, Merry Christmas! People say, you can't say that anymore. I go, who's they? Is this is a conspiracy? Then they say, you gotta say happy holidays. I've been saying happy holidays ever since I was a little kid. And people say, why do you say happy holidays? There's a conspiracy here. No, I say happy holidays because it includes New Year's. When I grew up in Buffalo, I had many good friends that were Jewish. So it, it, it included them, it included my, my friends that are Afro-American, that they were celebrating their holiday. It didn't matter. It's a holiday season. And if I want to say Merry Christmas, that's okay too, because nobody really gets their knickers in a knot about it around here anyways. So um, when I see this on Facebook and they say, it's, it's not okay to say Merry Christmas because they say it's not. It's like, who's they? Who's saying this? Who's, who's telling you you can't? So uh, I encourage you to say Merry Christmas, and I am. So Merry Christmas to every, you, every one of you right now. Uh, we got a holiday season. What We officially started. The Christmas tree up here is up here in the studio. We got our, our decorations up at home. We're, we're in full swing here. So don't let anybody tell you you can't say Merry Christmas. And don't let anybody say, oh, it's terrible you said happy holidays, because that's okay too. All right, there's my, my piece on Christmas. All right, uh, as many of you know, Chautauqua Sunrise is 
uh, a community-based, in my mind, a community-based show, and we try to talk about all the good things about Chautauqua County, what's going on. And if you have an announcement, if you have an anniversary, your club or organization uh, has an event coming up and you want to let us know and the rest of the world, you can contact us and they will pop this up in a minute. This is like magic here. Uh, they will send you the information that you can call us, you can write us, 753-5225. You can email us at that particular email address. You can Twitter us, you can, you can Facebook us, you can do whatever you want. Get your information to us. You can mail it to us, you know, old snail mail to the, to the studio. And we, have, we've, we receive mail here from time to time. Okay, uh, so don't be bashful. And, and just to show you how it's done, I want to wish my dear, lovely wife, Barb, a uh, happy anniversary. We've been married this week, coming up 34 years. She's probably right in the top 1% of all patient wives in the world. Uh, you see me every week and what I do, and she just shakes her head. She goes, mm. And you know some of the things I've been into and the places that we've been. Uh, it's been a great 34 years, and, and I look forward to another 34 years. Because 68 years is not uh, unheard of these days, so I'll be really kind of old she'll be fine but I'll be old and uh, so if you had an anniversary uh, somebody that has a special birthday give us a call drop us a note be happy to share that with you okay don't be bashful um, also I want to thank people that watch the show for all of you that come up to me whether I'm at the mall at a meeting if uh, I happen to be in the grocery store and you come up and you say hey doc I watch your show I really enjoy it or you, you give a comment or, or whatever it really means a lot to me and to the crew here, uh, the fact that you're watching the show. And I know a lot of times that you are listen, listening to us on WRFA on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. You could be watching me uh, Thursday night at 8 o'clock here coming out of Mayville. You, there you go. Uh, you could be watching us on YouTube or whatever. Um, we're just really glad that you, ch you check in because we think what we're doing is really important here. And the thing I was going to share with you is that, according to my schedule, we are booked into the latter part of May of 2016 already, solid. Okay, so that tells you the level of interest that people have in the show, the confidence that people have in what we're doing here, and that we're, 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 we're doing what we think is important, and that's talking about Chautauqua County and the people that live here and all the good stuff that's going on. So, uh, thanks again, and if you have an idea for the show, let us know. We'd be happy to... Uh, to look, up, look at that and work on it. I have a bunch of things to share with you, as I always do, because you do just what I ask you to do. Is you send us stuff. So let me uh, grab my specs here and let's get started. Okay, right off the bat, uh, I don't have a screen for this, but the uh, Veterans of Valor Project in Ripley are still looking for anyone that uh, has lived in Ripley that was honored with a Medal of Honor, the top nine, and that's like the Medal of, uh, Medal of Honor, Purple Heart, Bronze Star, Silver Star, those types of things. And if you know someone that was a Ripley resident, born in Ripley, that was honored with one of those awards, uh, let Bob McIntosh know, or the Ripley Town Clerk, uh, Becky Carvello, and um, we are working together to help them put this information together, and they are collecting donations for a special project to erect two signs that will be uh, honoring all those recipients, and that should be done sometime this summer, and donations are being accepted at the town hall with Becky as well. Okay, uh, I've been mentioning the Head Start program for Chautauqua County. Um, Leanne Subulian has told me that they still have some openings uh, throughout the county, but it's primarily in the Jamestown area. So if you have a three and four year old, and you are interested in perhaps some half-day or all-day daycare, childcare, educational, preschool, get the kid ready for school with Head Start, call 366-5661 to see if you're eligible, or 450-4977. 366-5661 or 450-4977. They are associated with Chautauqua Opportunities, award-winning Head Start program, one of the top 10 Head Starts in America. So check that out if you're interested. Okay, in other news, Ripley is like crazy wild right now. They are working hard to bring the Christmas spirit to the community. So we got a couple of slides that we, we'd like to share with you. And again, if your club organization has a slide like this, send it to me or send it to the show and we'll do the same. So let me just highlight this real quick. Uh, Ripley Holiday Lighting Contest, you sign up at the 
Well, let's see, let me get this straight here. The community bank, library, or town hall, uh, there is an entry fee, and that is simply donating a non-perishable food item for the Ripley Food Pantry. The deadline is December 8th, so hurry up. The, the judges' categories are best display, kids' choice, and most unique. And winners will be announced at the chicken and biscuit dinner that we'll be probably telling you about here in a second. Uh, okay, moving right along. Christmas in Ripley continues on December 12th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It starts at the Ripley School Gymnasium. Crafters and vendors from all over the county are going to be there. Um, some buddies of mine who are going to be on this show later in the month, um, Sue Tillotson and Jim Cunningham will be providing some awesome music, as well as the uh, Ripley Elementary Band and Chorus. Shopping, Chinese auction, food and fun going on there at the Ripley School Gymnasium. Then I mentioned the chicken and biscuit dinner that will be at the Ripley United Methodist Church uh, from 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Uh, tickets are $7 pre-sale, $8 at the door. And if you've got a gaggle of kids, think about this, $25 for a family pass. Everybody gets fed for $25. What a deal. Tickets at the community bank, library, and town hall. Also, continuing on, there's a buffet at the Ripley United Methodist Church that same morning, 7.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Boy, you can eat in Ripley. Uh, from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., you got the Rudolph Pancake Breakfast as well going on at Meters. So if you don't want to do the Methodist Church Breakfast, you go to Meters and add pancakes. Then they have this deal called a Passport to Ripley, and you go to the various places throughout the, the day, and if you get 9 out of 12 of the events, you get it stamped, I guess. Then you uh, put your ticket into a, a, a drawing for a holiday basket, and that's going to be given away. Then 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., they have Twas the Night Before Christmas at the Ripley Free Library. They are in the spirit here. 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., the live nativity scene at the Ripley United Methodist Church. Horse-drawn hayride starting at 1 p.m. Donation of a non-perishable food item. Uh, the restaurant Wings and Things uh, is going to have some specials from noon to 4. Tree lighting and angel tree lighting at 6.30 p.m. Uh, at Meter's Restaurant. And a candlelight service following the tree lighting. And then someone I know, Sean Moore, is going to have something special there. And he's going to have R2-D2. We got a picture of that. I'm sure we do. Yep. R2-D2 is going to show up. He's not the real deal, but he's uh, pretty darn close to it. So if the kids like Star Wars, and, and who doesn't these days? There's a new movie coming out, I guess. You can visit with R2-D2. All right. In other news, uh, Monday, uh, December 14th, from uh, that's a Saturday, through December 19th is Child Safety Week. Operation Kids Safe will be will be providing digital fingerprinting and a photo safety program. Stop at any of the Schultz locations in Jamestown, Warren, Dunkirk, Oyen, or Bradford. They're everywhere. During the hours of 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. on weekdays and 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. And that's uh, Operation Kids Safe at all the Schultz uh, locations. And that's a good thing. And if you haven't done this before, the, Mas the Masons do something very similar, similar to the Masonic ID program. And the children, there's no ink involved. You, they get their fingerprints uh, digitally uh, scanned and pictures taken. And it's a great, great way to keep track of your children throughout various activities throughout the county. The ch county fair, going to the ice castle. You can lose a kid real quick these days in large crowds. Okay, I think I'm checking my list, checking it twice. I think that's all we have for right now. We're going to take a commercial break, a little uh, public service announcement, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. It's <laughs> There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Okay, and we have shelters for cats and dogs in, in Chautauqua County, and they're, they're great dogs. I know a lot of people have rescue dogs, shelter dogs, and if they're anything like my dog, Max, you're going to love it. Christmas is coming. Could be a great... Uh, great surprise for one of your kids or, or adults uh, under the tree. I, uh, I missed one more announcement. Uh, my friends over at Crossroads uh, Market 
up there in the hills. Uh, they are continuing their activities right through the 19th. So today, next week, and the following week, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be there with seasonal music by various groups. And um, if you haven't been to Crossroads, it's a great, great place to, to visit and lots of cool little shops. Shop locally, okay? All right, let's get into our show. Um, my guest, I, I met at a Rotary meeting. She was a guest speaker talking about what she was going to talk about. And she's been the hardest guest I have had ever to get scheduled. <laughs> she let the, the winter of 2014 and 15 get in the way. It was only like five feet of snow between us and her at the time, so we understood that. And then we scheduled again, I forgot what happened. But anyways, I am very, very happy and pleased to, uh, to welcome Jennifer Phillips Russo, children's author. Oh, thank you. All right. So, uh, Jennifer, uh, I, I listened to you that day at, at Rotary, and I was thinking, wow, uh, here's another creative person in Chautauqua County. I think it would be fun to have you on the show. And... Uh, and we were talking a little bit about that you're not originally from Chautauqua County, but you're more from up north a little bit, or my wife would say east. I'm always directionally challenged here. So good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. You're, uh, finally, <laughs> yeah, I know. did it. So uh, much anticipated show here. Um, Jennifer, where are you from originally? I'm originally from a small town called Marilla, New York. Okay. It's outside of Buffalo, mm -hmm. over by East Aurora area. They were our rivals. So you're near, uh, who makes all those toys? Fisher Price. Fisher Price. That's in, that's Marilla area, right? Well, that's in East Aurora, but yes, Easter, that's out exactly where we're from. Okay, I'm not advertising for toys here. I just <laughs> happen to remember something. <laughs> it's Christmas. It's Christmas. <laughs> okay, so uh, but how did you get down here in Chautauqua County? My father was actually um, a correctional officer at Attica Prison, and then they built Lakeview Shock. Oh, okay. So he was one of the original crew to come down here for that. And was we he a big tough guy? He was a big tough guy. Big guy. Big guy. Don't mess with him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we relocated down here when I was 16 years old, and I've been here ever since. Great. And so you went from Marilla to? Westfield. Westfield, just Westfield. down the road. Yeah. Okay. Graduated all, all from there. Okay. So um, you got into, into this uh, thing called writing, and, and I know there's an interesting story behind it, so tell us a little bit about that. I call myself the accidental author because I have four children and when we're pregnant we never find out the sex because there's very few surprises in life anymore. <laughs> so I have one son and I had had two daughters at the time and he was very, very hopeful that we would have another boy. And when the third daughter arose, <laughs> or arrived, excuse me, he uh, went into this little bit of a depression. He could not understand that everything he was doing, all the thoughts he was putting out in the universe, we did not have a boy and there was no amount of dialogue that could pull him out of this. <laughs> I was like, but some people don't even have a brother or sister. You have three. Yeah. And nothing could bring him out of his um, spiral. It was really sad. Yeah. So I was in the middle of taking a course on um, writing for science education in the middle school area. Okay. And I thought to myself, what if I wrote a story that's kind of the same situation, but it, it's not, and he can maybe see himself in there, and I can help him along with this. So I started writing the story, and I kept writing, and I kept writing, and it was so much fun, and I couldn't believe that it turned into what it has, but I originally wrote it for him. And when I sat down and read it to them, they, I, I was amazed at the emotions that I evoked first and foremost, mm. and then they asked me if it was ever going to be a book. When was it going to be a real book, Mommy? And I was like, okay. <laughs> I try to take every moment as a parent to use it as a teaching moment. I tell my children that they can do anything they want as long as they're willing to put the hard work mm -hmm. into it. And they, so they'll question me all the time. Well, can I fly? <laughs> Invent the shoes. Yeah. But yeah, to put the hard work into it. So I used it as a teaching moment and I said, yes, it will be a book. And then my journey started. <laughs> you started. All right, now before you get too far, boy, girl, 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 what are their names? Giovanni. Sophia, Mariella, and Aria. Wow. All Irish. All Irish. <laughs> <laughs> boy, girl, girl, girl. I've got mm. boy, girl, boy, boy. Really? No, no, I got boy, boy, girl, boy. I, got, I, I get them in the 
Depends on how you look. And you survived, I, so there's hope for oh. parents. <laughs> My my oldest is like uh, going to be forty one, mm -hmm. and my youngest is like thirty. So oh. we we're, we're still surviving now. Good, good. There's <laughs> hope. There's, there's hope. hope. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the boy is Giovanni. Yes. Which is a great name for Thank John. You. <laughs> exactly. So those those are uh, Italian or Sicilian. Well, my husband is Sicilian, but we. I am, I'm, I'm part Sicilian. Are you? People don't know that. They think I'm just a big old goofy Irish guy. <laughs> but I'm actually half Sicilian. That's why um, I could relate to those names. I'm a Heinz 57. <laughs> it's okay. That's what we all are. So how, how old is, does he go by Giovanni or does he go by Gio or John or? I would prefer Giovanni, but he has shortened it to Gio and all Gio. his friends call him Gio and right, some so call him G. Okay, how old is G? I like G. <laughs> G is 14 years 14. old. 14, all right. Is he, is he watching the show right now? He's not. He's at a wrestling tournament. Okay, with the so wrestling. it's safe, so we won't, we won't embarrass him. <laughs> okay, and how old are the other three? Sophia is 12. Okay. My Mariella is 7, but she'll be 8 on the 15th. All right, we'll call her 8. Okay. And Aria is 5. And five. So you've got a, a span almost like our, I do. We have an 11-year span. You've got a 9-year span. So that makes it interesting. I remember one day uh, hugging my oldest, and he was just beginning to shave, and the youngest had to get his diaper changed. <laughs> oh, the day that she get, the baby got out of diapers, my husband and I were like, high five. Yeah. <laughs> a decade of diapers. Done. Okay. So, you, so you're feeling bad for Giovanni. I was, yes. And he's, he's like... He, the world has failed me. I don't have somebody to, to play ball with. It doesn't realize how cool it is to have sisters, though. I didn't have a sister, so I don't, can't really relate to that. That's why changing my daughter's uh, clothes, I always had them on backwards because I dressed her like a boy instead of a frilly girl. <laughs> so I always get corrected. So, so, so then what happened once you wrote the story? What was it about? It was about a little boy mm -hmm. who has three sisters. And I named people have act their names are in the book. The characters' names are my children's names. Okay. Because I wrote it for my children. Sure. And um, some people have questioned, why did you do that? Aren't you for worried about, I don't know, people coming to take your children? Does they know they're real? I'm like, no, <laughs> it's a story for my children. That's why I did it. And I wrote the story. He's a little boy, and it's the same situation. His sisters are smothering them with their sea of pink and glitter and frou-frou. <laughs> and I actually named them the frou-frou crew in the book. How oh, funny. And um, it's how he just wants to get away. He wants to get away from them. He can't stand that he's surrounded by them. And then the story takes a turn where something happens in his family becomes very important to him, and he realizes how much they mean to him. And he fights for them, and it's really touching to me. But <laughs> it's my story for my children, and now it's out there for everybody else. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at the book. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at books here, actually. And when I first look at the book, I'm going like, this is kind of like, uh, kind of deep looking here. It is. And it's kind of ominous. I mean, it's not frou-frou at all. So why don't you hold up the book and tell us the title of it and so on. And, and can you give us sort of the... You know the short version of what's it? What, what 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 can we look forward to if we were to read the first? Tell us the name of the book. The book's name is uh, the the Dragon Birthmark. Okay. World in the Shadows, mm. and it's because there is a whole another world that lives in the shadows that you're really not aware of unless you are born with a birthmark. And you are if you have a special birthmark, then you're part of this elite order. And you have all these protectors throughout your life that you don't become aware of it until it's your turn. And somebody actually needs you in the order to come in, help out, and fight against evil. So he finds out that he's actually a dragon rider. Rider or rider? Rider. Like rider. You, you like get on top of a dragon? You get on top of a dragon and mm. go into battle and fight. You know, one of my... I'm still a kid. I, so am I. I'm still a kid. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm like this big, tall, hairy guy, and I'm still like a... a 11 year old, I guess. Harry Potter, How to Train a Dragon. I mean, those are like my favorite. They're my favorite. And I could, I could watch them like right now. I've read the series of Harry Potter three times, all seven books, and I've watched How to Train a Dragon every time it comes on TV. I, what, are, what is here about dragons? I don't know what it is about dragons. I am completely enthralled with them. Ever since I was a child, I always have been. I've always wanted them to come and take me away and take me on all these adventures. I try to incorporate them that they are real, because in my mm. mind, they're real. So there's, in book two, I kind of make a tie to um, the Loch Ness 
and so that dragons are out there. And I tried to put a little special spin in there, questioning what we know today as people that, oh, well, oh, maybe it is something different in my right. Like, mm -hmm. I'll take um, the disaster, the terrible tsunamis that happened, and say that that was actually these evil forces trying to destroy some of these elite people with birthmarks so that they can't grow up and fight them, so. What, um, what age level would you say this is for? I would say it was for nine to 12. That's what my mm -hmm. demographic is. But I have so many smaller students who read them and contact me. And then I have an adult following <laughs> who are emailing me and telling me how much they enjoy it. And it's really all been crazy for me because I just wrote it for my children. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's how it starts very often. Um, you said that you took a writing class, but you hadn't written anything before that? I grew up <coughs> writing poetry my entire life. I had an okay. uncle who was a poet, and he <coughs> would take me aside, this is many years ago, mm -hmm. and read me his poetry. And there's something so beautiful about that, that I would write. My mother actually found some of my old writings and handed them to me last summer. I won't share those. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I, oh, another thing about this writing is that I've never considered myself very good at it. And I've always been a storyteller. It's not something that I set out to do. Originally, I was going to be a dancer on Broadway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you dance ever? I still do. I've been teaching for the last 20 years. So you still, you I still to, have it? I do. This is, well, I'm jumping all over the place. but kind It of, doesn't matter. I do the same thing. The reason why, in book two, I held an art contest for mm -hmm. local students to illustrate it. Book two is completely illustrated by children. Let's hold that one up. And what's the name of this one? This one is called Threats of Tartarus, book two of the Dragon Birthmark series. That's what my dentist tells me every time I go there. Tartar buildup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Tartarus. They, is, they that a, is that, who, what is Tartarus? Tartarus is... Um, can you tell us? Or I don't want to I can. Right. It, in, like, mythology, it is the underworld. Oh, okay. We have a different... So, word. like, uh, the yeah. river uh, Styx, the underworld. Absolutely, and that is in book two. All right, Tartarus. And now, the river Styx is in book Styx, two. Uh, there we go. There was also a band called Styx. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... Where, where are you drawing all these ideas from? They're just inside my, I call it Jennifer land, mm -hmm. inside my head. And it is a really fun place, and I go there very often. <laughs> <laughs> As a child, I was always outside, and I really feel that our children need to get <clears throat> out and just explore more. Just mm -hmm. get outside. I was outside constantly, and I was building forts, and I was creating these adventures, but they were always mm. inside my head. <laughs> and now I'm using that schema in my writing, and it's so fun because it's a journey back into my childhood, and I get to just pen it down and share it with other people. How oh, cool. <laughs> we got a phone call oh, already. Did. So you ready? Oh, sure. <laughs> See, with a certain amount of trepidation. Good morning, caller. Oh, good morning, Jack, and oh. good morning. Jennifer, this is Linda Spaulding. Good How morning. are you? Good well, morning. Well, thank you. Good morning. How are you? You sound perky today. Oh, I am perky. You're always perky yeah. this time of the day. Are you, are you a morning person? I'm I not. am a morning person. I have a yeah. morning show. I should be like the afternoon guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the morning person. But I do like, really, I like all hours. It's a shame that we need rest because I like all hours of the day. <laughs> <laughs> they have different <laughs> moods. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask you about your writing. Do you know Kent Brown? No, I do not. He has, he has children books publication. And he also he used to have workshops in Chautauqua with highlights. He's the, uh, I think he's the publisher of Highlights Magazine, the children's magazine. I am not, I don't know him, but I am aware of him. Wait, is, yeah. that, is that relation to Dave Brown? I, probably. He's the son of Dr. Kent Brown. Okay, because Dave Brown's family has highlights. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that's Must probably be. Dave, yeah. Okay. I, I know Kent uh, mm -hmm. better because through Doug, you know. Oh, we sure. We do things together in public publications. And uh, I think there was a book that they published about Grace Bedell, and they it, somebody published <laughs> it through him, and it was called Mr. Lincoln's Whisker or something like <laughs> that. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah it was a... Uh, it was a, a nice little children's book. Well, children's books are fascinating, and uh, it, it's so great that you're doing it. How long have you been writing? Thank you. I have been writing for five years. 
Uh huh. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Well, you know, um, I like children's stories too, and I like to make things up. And I, I used to write things <laughs> when I was a child, imaginary things. And uh, I spent a lot of time along, along Lake Erie growing up with my grandparents, and so I ought to just recall some of those moments. And Aww. that's what you do. You need to write a book, Linda. I was just going to say that. Start writing them down. Mermaids and things. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it's great to see you on the show. And we, we need more authors for children's books. Oh, thank you. Um, I do want to announce that there are services with the Chautauqua County Office for the Aging. Mm -hmm. And there is the Senior Employment Program. And please call me about jobs. I have jobs. Uh, with the private sector and jobs with the senior aid program, computer training. Once again, we started our Patterson Library computer training in Westfield. That's up and running, and Darla is the peer coach. Uh, I apologize to anybody that I haven't gotten back to yet that's called about jobs. We've been just swamped, but I am going to get to you. We've recorded <laughs> your names, and uh, please feel free to contact us. We're quite busy. Good. That's a good problem. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Great. All right, well, got the tree up? Uh, not yet, not yet. Come on, Miss Perky, let's go here. <laughs> chop, chop. <laughs> I have my wreaths up, though. I put all those right. up last that week. That counts, that counts. My, my wreaths are all up outside. Okay. Uh, I have easy trees now. I used to do a, easy a lot tree. of time and effort. Now I do it the easy way. Easy tree. I like that. <laughs> Instead of fake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does your tree fa uh, shed as much as a real one? Mine does. Well, you know, I found that a real tree is just as easy as the artificial. In fact, um, it, it, it's much, much easier. <laughs> you know, getting all those parts to go in. I mean, with a real tree, all you have to do is just put it in the stand, and it's ready to go. The only problem is hope it doesn't fall down. Um. I don't know how many times that mine came down. Oh, well. And, and if you have a cat, there's problems, too. Do you have a cat? <laughs> My dogs would always brush along the bottom, and there goes. I have to. I can only put ornaments uh, a certain level because Max likes to go under the tree and sleep. <laughs> okay, Linda. Well, you get ready for the the holiday season, the Merry Christmas season, and we'll talk to you next time. Okay. Okay. All right. Real good. Thanks Thank you. Thanks. Have a great week. Right. Okay. I, yeah. Highlights is a, is a magazine. It's right uh, locally. It comes out of the area. I know. They're very a great cool. magazine. Very we cool. actually have the app on the iPad, the Seek and Find for oh, the children to find. Oh, very cool. <laughs> That's super. I'm going to have to have Dave on the show sometime. Uh, okay, so we're talking about Tartarus and the River Styx. Mm -hmm. um, this, th these are things that, that are in classical nature. I mean, these aren't things that mm, most people hear about on a daily basis. Did, did, did you study history or, or mythology? I I'm amazed at the amount of work that I have, um, or the amount of knowledge that I have gained on this journey. I did study them throughout school, mm -hmm. and it's always fasc fascinated me. Mythology. The book one is all about um, the fantasy world and setting up the story. Book two goes into twists of mythology mm -hmm. and putting a spin on everything because I don't want to copy anybody else's work. I want to make it That's mine. That's a good thing, yeah. I, yeah <laughs> Less <but> lawsuits that <laughs> way. But I wanted to make people question everything that they know mm -hmm. and um, add this magical element to things. And the studying, uh, there's even, there's a lot of elves in my book and I've had to go through. They speak elvish in my book. I had to go around and do research on, there is an elvish language, like they had to do it for the Lord of Rings. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot about them. Yeah, I like them too, Lord <laughs> of the Rings. <laughs> I just watched one the other day. We have the same brain. <laughs> so, so yeah, I put all of that. That's what I love. Mm -hmm. And that's what I put into my books for my children. And I'm really glad that other people are starting to turn on to it instead of sitting in front of a television. People mm -hmm. need to read more. I really Absolutely. feel there's such journeys and fun and they just really need to sit on Okay, a, a question popped up uh, on my screen here, and it was also part of what I was going to ask you, so I'll put the whole question together in one big thing. <clears throat> Myself included, I write, and uh, I know other people that have worked at writing, and they get very frustrated because they can't get their work published mm -hmm. because of the machine, the industry, and so forth. And... Um, 
I remember speaking with Sue Rowan Masters. You know Sue at all? She's a, a, in a Vicki Wesling. Oh, is it? I think I, I Okay, so they've all done uh, the children's writers, and each one of them has taken a little different approach to getting, getting that thought from inside your brain into that paper form. How did you do it? Okay. I, too, was very frustrated with mm -hmm. the machine. I did try, mind you, I'm a scientist and a dancer and a mom. Mm -hmm. I'm an accidental writer, I call myself. Right. My children challenged me to make it a real book, so I need to prove to them that it can be done as long as you're willing to put the work into it. So I went about all of the traditional, first I had to have it edited. <laughs> yeah. To find an editor, and the edit, that was the most daunting thing when she sent back the edits. Oh, it yeah. sat on my desk for three weeks unopened. Did you cry? I was so afraid <laughs> to open it. But it was very constructive, and she had a really wonderful way of helping me and she told me one day that y it's your job to write the story down it's my job to make it technically where correct. did you find your editor people Facebook really I put it out yeah. there to say all my friends does anybody know any editors mm -hmm. and one of my high school old high school from Iroquois said well I'm an editor so we work okay. together on that very nice <gasps> what's her name her name her name was Lisa Kapinski when she was okay. non-married and now it's Lisa Hogue okay she, she might be watching Maybe. She's out in <laughs> California. So watch it on YouTube then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so she got to edit. And, what, and exactly what does the editor do? Well, this is a stupid idea. This doesn't work. Or I was amazed. It is really a job. Mm. They, she came back with, you have mentioned this three times throughout the book. Maybe you need to make a better connection. You have to flesh this character out a little more. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about this. You told me too much about that. Your commas are all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Run on so, sentences? Yes. <laughs> so can you, say, can you spell long-winded? <laughs> <laughs> so it was, I'm just very, very thankful for our okay. relationship. All right, so you, you, you type up everything and you send it to, their, to them in hard copy? or You send the manuscript out to your editor. She sends it back. I rewrote the book five times. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, jeez. And then I don't know as an author and you're a writer if your work is ever done. Mm -hmm. Like you send it off and then I read it. I read it after that and I was like, oh, wow. I need to add that yeah, to it. What was I not thinking? Right. <laughs> but I had, after that, the next process was, okay, send your manuscript off to a literary agent. A literary agent. So now the thing has been checked over for spelling, grammar, and, mm -hmm. uh, and all that stuff. But before we get to literary, literary agent, What's stopping the editor from stealing your book? A handshake. <laughs> that's it, a leap of faith. It is a leap of faith. And um, that's a very good question. But What would you recommend? My way, I just lucked out. Mm -hmm. I had very responsible people and trustworthy people that I know of. Mm -hmm. But along my process, I have found out that people might think I'm not trustworthy as in the illustration process for book two. Uh -huh. She's, I had somebody get in touch with me and say, you are possibly exploiting children. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? I write for children. No, I would never do that. One of the good, good people. <laughs> and I said, Cause, because they are, it is all illustrated mm. by children. And she said, are you going to profit off of their illustrations? And to be quite honest with you, I never even check what the books are doing. I simply wrote it for children and to help children and to inspire children to create and mm -hmm. play and I would never do that to child but I had to get a lawyer I had to get a lawyer to write up documents and everybody had to sign it and parents had to sign it it was a very daunting process not something that I was prepared for so if somebody was watching right now and you're starting to see where I'm going with it, is right. the process and to protect yourself before you send it to an editor, do you copyright it? Do you, do you register what your story? What do you do with it? I had to get a, um, the UNSB number. Mm -hmm. you had to, I had to contact, I think it's called Bowker, B-O-W-K-E-R, and um, order these numbers so that it would be, it's assigned to my title and you have to give the description of it and send it all in and you have to pay for them. Then Library of Congress. <laughs> after, it's, just, it's a crazy, crazy thing that I was not. Most people have your literary agent takes care of all right. that for you. But my process of self-publishing, I had to create my own company, and your own of, company. I did. It's called um, Akeen Press, mm -hmm. and there's a funny story. Do you do you know what that is? No. <laughs> okay, so you know dandelions. Yes. I think that they're people think that they're weeds, but I. I feel like there are wish their wishes. Mm -hmm. 
And the little thing that blows yep. away is called an akin. Oh, I did not know that. So, I had an akin down my throat one year when I was demonstrating oh, science to my students. Problem and is. I was showing how the wind blows the seeds and I sucked in yeah. instead of blowing out. <laughs> Two days I couldn't talk. Imagine <laughs> that. It was torture for me. <laughs> there was someone it, throughout my um, high school career who told me that they didn't think that I was worthy of being in a certain class. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a teacher. Go ahead. And <laughs> I use that. I think that that was slight motivation <laughs> for me to say, I wrote two books. And I thank that person now. Yeah. At first I was angry with yeah. that person. But now I thank that person because I think subconsciously that pushed me to prove myself. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's really been fun. Okay, so let's roll back the tape. So you start out with an idea. Yes. You're, you're passionate about it. You sit down, you write it. And then you finally say, hmm, maybe I should do something with this. So you contact somebody you get an editor they they dress it up they clean it up for you they shape it a little bit meanwhile you haven't done anything official but you probably should have mm -hmm. registered it or or, or right. do whatever you're going to do and then it goes to somebody called a literary agent i have no idea what that means okay now here's a process that broke my heart many of times a literary agent is somebody who goes to the big publishing houses and basically is your salesperson and tries to sell your book for you it's like a pitch person right okay they are also the ones who will set up all of your rights and um, royalties and all of that. However, I went through um, Create Space with Amazon.com to do mine. And there are still things where you have to sign off and mm -hmm. it's all legal. But um, what you need to do is construct a, a query letter. Yep. And then you have to, there are lots of publications out there that have list literary agents and they're for all different genres and mine happens to be middle grade fantasy fiction. I have a friend who is actually a nonfiction literary agent in New York City, so I sent it to her, but she can't do anything with it. And it's not like they all, there's a ton of them out, they don't all talk, she can't hand it to a friend. So um, I queried all of these different agents and what basically happens from what I am told, because I've not been <laughs> in their office, is that they get stacks of query <coughs> letters they go in, a, in manuscripts and they go in this slush pile mm. and then interns read them. LG. And then the intern says, you know, this one's kind of fun, Re read that mm. one. So it goes through this weeding out. Process. Now my understanding of a query letter is basically you introduce yourself and you give a, a maybe the first part of your book mm -hmm. or a chunk of it so that kind of tantalizes this literary agent, right. catch their attention, but you don't give them the whole book. Oh, I had to, um, if you do it by snail mail, Mm -hmm. You can send portions of it. Okay. I have had some ask me for um, a couple chapters, one okay. to three chapters. All right. Of it. All right. So it's a portion, but not the right. whole book. Right. So what you're trying to do is get their attention so that they will get interested in it. And then do you pay them then? Or they get a certain They get royalty? a percentage. Okay. They all get right. a percentage of everything that goes. <laughs> right. All right. So, so far we got an editor, a lawyer, a literary agent, and you have to do all this other, and you had to create a company. Sounds easy to me. And you have to have an illustrator. <laughs> oh, illustrator. I left that one out. <laughs> and then I actually. Stick people don't work. <laughs> I, I set up an internship with um, the State University of New York mm -hmm. in their public relations. So I had a PR student actually to give her real life experience. She tried to get my name out there and it was fun. It was a good experience for both of us and she helped me. <laughs> <laughs> Question just popped up. Can you, let me read it again. Can you publish online directly with companies to skip the middle person? So is there somebody, is there places that you publish for people to, like, uh, let me think of the, what's it called? Where you can, Spotify is where you pull down songs one at a time, or can you go online and people buy your stuff online? I'm, I'm, I don't know the answer to this. I'm, um, I guess I don't understand the question. You can buy this stuff online. Oh, like ebooks. books just Yes, back. Okay. they're both e-books. Okay. These are e-books? Yes. What's an e-book? An like e-book e is <laughs> just an electronic version of your book. Okay. And these are both e-books on um, Amazon.com. And book one is on Barnes and Noble. Really? Yeah, as well. But, yeah. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> um, so, how do you get to ebooks? You do that, or your literary agent does that, or? I am all of them. You're all of them. <laughs> the literary agent would do all of that. Now, they have different departments within their companies who handle, you know, the PR, the marketing, the setting up of the digital copies. 
or the hard copies, and um, I do it all through Create Space. There are other. So you don't have a literary I agent. I do not. So you gave him the heave home. Says this isn't working. You're doing it on your own. Numerous rejections. Heartbreakers. Um, that's what you refer. Right. So you're a, a mom of four, a dance instructor. Uh, you're going to school, and you are a literary agent editor. Own your own company, and you are a literary. Yeah. It keeps yes. you pretty darn busy. <laughs> and you, and besides that, you're writing the stories. All right. So um, there's stories about dragons. And, 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 and Giovanni is the main character? He is. And, he, and he's, how old is he in the book? In the book, he is 11, turning 12. So, so does he go like Harry Potter? Is he growing? He is growing. He's growing. So when will he get to 21? I have promised book three. <laughs> book three. I have promised a trilogy, and it is all up here, and the characters are keeping me awake at night. <laughs> but it's, well, as previously <laughs> stated, it's very hard. When I wrote, wrote, excuse me, wrote book one, it was with a laptop on my bed at 11 to 1 in the morning. Wow. While everybody was sleeping. Just to Take off one hat and uh -huh. put on another. <laughs> Have fun. All right, so let's keep, get back to the process okay. here. All right, so you're doing all these things. Yes. And you said, I can't do the literary agent, so now I'm going to, 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 to online publishing or self-publishing. So how do you get it into this physical form? How do I get it into a book that I hand people with this really shiny cover and illustrations and all that? How, how's that happen? I had to happen? design all of that through... Oh, so you're process. a designer now. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did, I did utilize the State University of Fredonia's illustration department and hired a student for mm -hmm. book one. Okay. She did the cover art. Who's that? Her name is Ariana Tressel Orner. See, I, see, I told you I was going to remind I you. Did, thank you. <laughs> so Ariana Tressel Orner was your illustrator. She was, but that process in itself took nine months. Really? I couldn't believe the amount of time. I, I call myself IGG, which is Instant Gratification Girl. <laughs> So I want it now. I, I do. I want it now. And um, I had to be very patient and understand that she was a student, even though I was paying her. Now, this is this book here, right? That's correct. I got, where am I? This, this, she illustrated this dragon. And that is a really fun process because I had to give her snippets. Of, I wanted each chapter to start with a doodle, a pencil drawing right. of what Giovanni was thinking. All right. So there's other illustrations in here that she did as well? Every chapter starts with an illustration. Uh, let me see if I grab one more. Uh, okay, well, that's, that's just a moment. Oh, oh, what's Is that it? one? Oh, well, that's the same one as, so there's another one right there. So that's a pencil illustration? Right. Okay, so Ariana did this. Yes, that's crazy. That. How's that for a good close-up? Isn't that crazy? Well She's crazy talented. Okay, great. So what's she doing now? I have no idea. Okay. After we handed over the check, so, that was it. Just moved on. Just moved on. Book number two, mm -hmm. I held an art contest. Okay, here's a deeper story. Are you ready? I'm ready. There's a gentleman you might be familiar of. His name is Kent Knappenberger. Kent Knappenberger, the beard. The beard. <laughs> Kent's been on, uh, in the studio here. When I was a junior yep. in high school, I went to Westfield, and mm -hmm. that's where he's a teacher. He asked me if I would choreograph, because he knew I was a dancer. Kent was your teacher? Ken's getting old. No, he just started, <laughs> like first, second year. <laughs> and he had asked if I would choreograph a piece, a dance piece, for some of his singing, for something that was going on. And I was so honored. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that an adult had that much faith in a student. It really just took off. And then I went to school for dance, and it just, I don't know, it sparked my passion. It had always been a part of my life, but I thought, wow, I could do something more with this that I've done. And, and now you can say a Grammy Award winner had me choreograph. Oh, that's right. Right. You he need to put that on your resume. <laughs> he was here in the studio. I digress for a moment. He was in the studio, and I, and I arranged for him to, to uh, be interviewed by Reed Powers when it was still the senior report. And we were, he, uh, Kent was all done. And he allowed me to carry his Grammy. I couldn't touch wow. it. It was, it was in the box, so I never got to hold it because it was against the law. But I could, because it was the rules. He couldn't let anybody else oh, hold really? it or get photographed with it by themselves. So, but I got to carry it in the box, wow. so no one knew it was in there. But you knew. But yeah, Kent's a great guy. Really, really, and he didn't know until maybe a year ago when I contacted him and told him <laughs> about this. Yeah. But that what he his belief in me wanted me to put that inspired me to put that belief in others, so I constructed an art contest for illustrations for students for book two. Wonderful. Hoping that I could maybe inspire one of them to do more with their hobby that they absolutely love, because I feel like a lot of people 
settle in life in jobs and don't go for things that they love because they don't realize that things they love are out there in jobs. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I do. <laughs> so everything in book two except for the cover art is illustrated by a student in the region or one's actually in Japan because she was a she was an exchange student while she was here. Let's see I'm, I'm trying to see here now do you do the same, same thing with pencil sketches? Yes. And I had to put on the website I had to put descriptions out there they could download them. Okay, here's, Can you see that? Oh, which one is that? Yeah. Little, like little baby dragons or something. Mm -hmm, wrapped around a tree. Okay, and so these are from kids around the world? Well, originally it was just going to be local, but uh -huh. somehow this, well, I know how it happened. There more. was, that's a student in Dunkirk. She okay, I opened that one. I'm holding this right, Randy. And um, she was an, for an exchange student from Japan, mm -hmm. and she's one of the illustrators. You could tell there was a little different style there. So, wow, what a wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank and you. now, who did the, the cover on this? That's really cool looking. Yeah, the cover art was done by a friend of Facebook again. I went out there and I had asked, does anybody know anybody who can digitally paint? Ooh. And another author friend of mine actually said, you know, you need to get a hold of my sister. Mm -hmm. She lives in Texas. <laughs> I have never met her face to face. Her name is Barbara Tackett. But I sent her a picture of, not a picture, I sent her what I wanted. And then I found things online that I said, sort of like this, but not. And that's what she came up with after back and forth and back and forth. I, and she's amazingly talented, I as you can guess see. So. And I wanted all of my books. I don't know if you can tell. Mm -hmm. But I wanted the artwork to wrap around the front and the back. Oh, yes, I see that now. Yeah. Oh, there's a tail and everything. Very, yeah. very cool. So what I'm hearing here is, is that... <coughs> It's all about networking. It really is all about networking. And there's probably people out there, if you're careful, that are very supportive. Mm -hmm. And then you just got to be real careful about the ones that kind of step on your neck or say, nah. Right. Or they're, you know, and that kind of it can, what's the word I want to say, kind of stop you from, discourage you, stop you from moving forward. But then there's enough people out there that, and, and some of the people you mentioned were teachers and friends and very cool. Somebody else asked a question while we were talking here. Um, do you, when you're actual typing and writing, you're on a computer. What what do you use to edit Word or what what program? I do use Word. Mm -hmm. I write in Word, and um, the thesaurus is my favorite friend because <laughs> 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 I'm always using it as I reread. And now I've actually my children are writing, which I love. And when they'll talk, they'll read to me what they're doing. I'm saying you've used that word about four times now. Maybe find another way of saying it. Mm -hmm. so word is exactly what I use. That's great. Okay, um, so the third book is going to be coming out when? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I keep asking myself. I have a couple life things that I have to complete before I can sit down. Although the winters are where I do my best writing. Yeah. So it's winter coming up here. I'm really hoping. The writing season is coming. It's you can coming, feel it. and it's been, they're knocking on the inside of my brain. Let me out, let me out. Okay, what are we looking at right <laughs> oh, now? Oh, that's Chris my just website. Okay, how do we get to that website? It's thedragonbirthmark.com. Mm-hmm. And, and who put this together? Uh, that was the PR student from SUNY Fredonia. Wow. It was really, I'm really thankful that we have such this um, local children who are mm, or young talent. people talented and willing to help and that I can actually help them get life experience as part of their education mm -hmm. and further my work <laughs> using them because I am not an illustrator if I were to illustrate this it would be a bunch of stick figures <laughs> walking around so. these are very very professionally uh, published they're very very good-looking books Thank and you. Uh, very attractive um, so if, if there's somebody watching right now, young person, old person, anybody person, and they're, they've got a story to tell, and I love that storytelling, because that's how I write, I'm a storyteller. I'm a storyteller. And, uh, and even in music, I mean, it's what songs are about, storytelling. And there's dance, I'm a choreographer, there you I'm a go. storyteller. So it all comes together. What advice would you give those folks that are watching right now? I would say, don't, I, one of my main things is telling people is don't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. No cannot physically stop you. It's just a word. You, if you are very passionate about what you're doing, and there are ways to get it done. I tried to go the traditional route of getting it published, and that didn't work, so I went through the self-publishing, and I got it done. 
So there's always a way to get it out there. And mm -hmm. just pen your story down. There's a lot of trepidation people capture, have. Capture the, the, the thinking and then let the rest come right. later. Right at first. Tell just the story. get it down. These books are, that one is 200 pages. I mean, that's, that's a, lot of, a lot of stuff. I can't stop writing <laughs> once I start. <laughs> is this typical for uh, a children's book, a child's book, from ages 9 to 12, about a couple hundred pages, would you say? Yes. Okay. Is there any rule of thumb? It should be no more than or no less than? I mean, have you found that? There are rules of thumb, and I'm sorry I don't have the figures in my head, but it's something like zero to so many thousand words is mm -hmm. a no novella, then from that to another seg is a novel. So there's... So these are what novels? These are novels. Okay. Okay. We, uh, we touched a little bit earlier uh, before the show started about some other things that you're doing. And I, and I think it ties into your writing. Okay? I think I'm right. And the reason being because I see water splashing mm -hmm. and, and, you, and, and I don't know if that's by accident or not. Mm -mm. Uh, but could you share a little bit about that? Because I think people like to know more about the writer and the author and the story. So what else are you pursuing right now? Which I think is fascinating with everything else that you're doing. Well, thank you. I am currently finishing up my master thesis work. Thesis work, sorry, for which is, um, which biology. Is, which is writing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what's your thesis about? Scientific writing, yeah. What's it, what's it on? It's on um, nutrient effects on algal blooms in Chautauqua Lake. Okay. And uh, I know when Senior Report was going, Reed would have various people on the show from the county about algae blooms or alga blooms, as mm -hmm. you called it. Um, so what do you hope to do with all that? I hope to, this Chautauqua Lake has actually been a part of my, even though we moved here when I was 16, mm -hmm. we spent our summers here over at uh, Camp Chautauqua in Hadley mm -hmm. Bay. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> and it has been just a big part of my life and I love the fact that it's out there, it's natural, we need to protect it, we need to be stewards mm -hmm. of um, the environment and we've been having these algal blooms just since of late really. And I want to know why. And I want to know okay. what's driving them. And I want to know if there's anything we can do to help bring everything back to the way and the beauty it was before, or how to prevent it happening in the future. So, so what, what's your uh, end game here? Besides being a children's author, what are you going to do with your degree? That is the <laughs> Get a job. <laughs> Hopefully somebody right. will hire me. <laughs> All right. So uh, you heard it first. We have a children's author that is also interested in saving Lake Chautauqua. So if you want her book or you want to hire her, give a call right now. At, call it the, we'll have a telethon for you. The oh, there we go. Jennifer Phillips Russo uh, telethon here. <laughs> okay. But that's interesting because I know that it must, some of your scientific research probably goes into your books. I would think about dragons and There's like a lot about nature in mm -hmm. my books. A okay. lot. Jennifer, I told you that this was going to happen. We have one minute and nine, eight, seven oh, wow. se seconds left. Yeah, wow. So tell us about where you can get to hold your books. It's Christmas season. Maybe someone would like this for their children. So how do they get them? Thank you. They are readily available on Amazon.com. You can just either search the Dragon Birthmark or Threats of Tartarus or just my name, and they will come up. Okay, so Jennifer Phillips Russo, yes. all that. And go to Amazon, you said? Amazon.com. Okay. And it's all there. All I got to do is order it. And it magically appears at your house. Magically and, appears. Okay. Jennifer, we got like 35 seconds left. Anything else you want to share with us before we go? No, I'm just really glad to be a part of this program. Mm -hmm. And thank you for having me on. And I love what you're doing for the county. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Folks, you've been watching Chautauqua Sunrise. My guest finally has been Jennifer Phillips Russo, children's author. Check out her books. It's uh, it's uh, it's. One of ours here in Chautauqua County doing some really fine work. And then if you need a scientist for the lake, give her a call. <laughs> uh, I'm Doc Camels. I will wish you a great weekend. Uh, we'll see you all next time right here, 9 o'clock, next Saturday morning, Chautauqua Sunrise. You take care and keep, keep an eye out for each other, okay? Bye now. Thank you. How easy? Is that? Was that? Fun. <laughs>